Hello and welcome to lecture one of Full Body Aerodynamics. Today we'll do an uh, introduction to the course and follow that with a uh, beginning of a sort of review and introduction to some basics of fluid mechanics that we'll need to set the stage for uh, the remainder of the course. The first thing we're going to do is review the syllabus in detail. There's a draft syllabus that's uh, on the Blackboard site now, and I'll go through that. Um, this may still be updated over the course of the first two weeks of classes uh, as uh, I experiment with things over the first couple of weeks, and we figure out what works and what doesn't, and I correct any uh, errors that may be present in that document. So I'm going to uh, switch away from this presentation now in order to go to uh, the syllabus and we'll work our way through that. Okay, so here's the syllabus for the course. Um, we're going to basically go through everything in this. This uh, might not be the most thrilling part of the course, but uh, it's very important information, especially since um, for me as an instructor, this is the first time that I'm teaching a course fully online in summer 2020. Uh, and for you as students, it may be the first time you're doing fully online courses as well. So hopefully you've watched the in, uh, Meet the Instructor video. My name is Jeff Defoe. Uh, I'm the, the main instructor for this course. Uh, the first thing to talk about is office hours. Um, again, these are tentative because I want to make sure that there's some availability um, for when you're not in class uh, in other courses. Um, so the office hours I've currently set tentatively are Mondays, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wednesdays, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And these will be held virtually using Blackboard Virtual Classroom. I'm using not the Virtual Classroom link uh, within the course Blackboard site because these are office hours for common between all the courses that I'm teaching this summer term. So I've got links here depending on the time so the morning link the morning sessions are this first link and the Wednesday afternoon sessions are this second link um, clicking on either of these links will allow you um, in these time periods to join a virtual classroom uh, where I will have open my you know, have it open and be present during my office hours and you can just drop in and ask any questions there if you've got something you want to ask about or discuss that you're comfortable doing with anyone else who may be there, we can do it in the main room of the virtual classroom. If you want to have essentially a private meeting, I'll create breakout rooms and we can move into those uh, one or two students at a time, whoever, uh, however that works out, uh, so that we can have sort of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting to, to discuss any, any open questions. But So this is the, the times I'm proposing, Monday 8 to 10, Wednesday 8 to 10, and Wednesday 1 to 3 uh, and um, I'd like feedback uh, and I'll probably I'll make a post in the discussion forums after I uh, post this lecture today um, asking for feedback uh, basically to let me know if there's any problem with these times I don't expect that you'll necessarily all be able to attend all of the times but at least um, at least I hope every student in the class can at least attend one hour out of these six total hours a week of office hours um, if that's not the case, please let me know um, and uh, I will try to adjust office hours accordingly. In terms of getting in touch with me, um, I don't want and won't respond to any uh, emails sent directly to my, my institutional email address that are related to material for this course. Um, the reason for this is I'm teaching several classes this summer and I just don't want my email inbox overwhelmed with course material. Uh, so we're going to use instead the course messages module as was explained in the course introduction and meet the instructor video. This course messages module is essentially an email system that's internal to the Blackboard site um, and I'll be essentially checking uh, those course messages once a day uh, more or less Monday to Friday so uh, roughly a 24 hour response time is what you can expect to messages that you send. As mentioned, 
and I'll discuss later. You can also use the discussion boards for any postings you want to make that are uh, not that don't need to be a private communication between yourself and uh, and me or uh, the GAs. Speaking of the GAs, we have two. Nominally, there's one per section. Again, this may change depending on enrollments in the course, um, but for now we've got two GAs. Instead of ha sort of really a assigning a GA per section, um, both are going to work with, with both sections of the course. Um, so again, for emailing them, use the course messages module. Nimesh is GA who's experienced with this course. He's been a GA for it multiple times in the past, including when I have taught the course last term in winter 2020. Um, his office hours, again, tentatively are scheduled Tuesday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. using our courses, uh, Blackboard Virtual Classroom. Danilo Stuckel, um is uh, an experienced GA, but this is his first time working with this course, so he'll be uh, learning some of the material as we go. Um, but I expect that uh, in very short order, he'll be uh, up to speed. Um, and his office hours are currently tentatively set for Fridays, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. In this way, I have office hours Mondays and Wednesdays. The course is on Thursdays. Nimesh's office hours are Tuesdays and Danilo's are Fridays. So it's possible for essentially every day of the week for you to have contact um, for the most part with uh, the teaching team for the course. Again, if there's problems where um, you, you cannot access any of these office hours due to time conflict, please um, post in the discussion boards to let us know about that and we can try to rework the times. Okay, so this class is nominally, you know, if we were doing in-person classes, it would be one three-hour lecture period per week for each section. There's no need to have live sessions for lecturing um, and in fact it's not considered best practice in online teaching so um, on the weeks that there's a lecture um, there's going to be essentially this format um, slides and a video of me going through the slides um, with additional commentary um, working out any example problems um, and uh, conceptual uh, problem explanations will be posted to the Blackboard site uh, along with the slides themselves. Five of the weeks of the course will be for labs. Um, these will be held live using Blackboard Virtual Classroom for the course. Um, in these, you'll work on flow simulation projects using a web-based platform um, in groups, uh, and the instructor and GAs will provide assistance as needed. Um, so these are live sessions and they're going to be clearly indicated when they are in the schedule and you'll attend during the time for your section uh, as I'll discuss below when I get into the, the course schedule. Okay, so the discussion boards, um, again I mentioned these uh, a couple of times, the discussion boards are, I intend them to be extensively used in this course as a way for the students to communicate with me and the GAs and for students to communicate with one another. This is essentially uh, the way you can have informal interactions with each other and with the teaching team in an online course. And as I'll detail in the evaluation methods later on, self-selected best contributions to the discussion boards will be something you'll submit as an assignment which will be graded later uh, in the course. Overall, I would anticipate you'll need to spend about eight hours a week on this class, including watching lecture videos. So here's the course description from the university calendar. I'm gonna skip that and give you the plain language course description. I'll read it because this is sort of what, what you're really going to get. In this course, you will be introduced to fluid mechanics as it pertains to external flows around buff bodies. The main application of interest is automobiles. You will learn conceptual flow behavior and the reasons for it. You will learn to use SimScale, which is a cloud-based numerical flow simulation, uh, computational fluid mechanics or CFD platform for external flow simulations. You'll also learn about dimensional analysis and wind tunnel testing. The main course resources are as follows. Um, the hub is the course Blackboard site. 
there's a textbook, which is sort of a required text notionally, but it, uh, don't worry, it's electronic and free. You can access it uh, through the University Letty Library at the link I've provided here. However, as I'll talk about a little bit later today, you don't really need to read the textbook. Um, a lot of the textbook, while it covers the material, it's not the clearest book, and I've attempted to extract the important things from it in my lectures and slides. There will be occasionally a, a subsection here and there that I may recommend that you read, and on those occasions I would say to do that, but in general, it isn't necessary or expected that you will actually read the uh, textbook sections or chapters associated with a lecture prior to that lecture. There will be some additional resources associated with the labs that will be posted to Blackboard as needed. On the internet um, is also SimScale. As mentioned, this is a web-based CFD system that we use for the lab work in the course. Again, this is free, and you can access it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. You'll need a course code to sign up for an academic plan to get sufficient computational resources and tools um, that you'll need in this course. And here's the code, 000111. To properly be able to use SimScale, you need a laptop or a desktop computer or a tablet with an external mouse and keyboard. By the date of the first lab, uh, you, it's really imperative that you acquire such a computing device if you don't have one already. If this is going to be a major problem for you, please get in touch with me via course privately via course messages, and we'll see uh, what we can do. Sign-up instructions will be posted soon on Blackboard, and they give step-by-step -step, uh, procedure of how to create a SimScale account. This will actually be part of an assignment, and um, actually, this is this is something I need to uh, edit in the syllabus. This is uh, something I left over from last semester. Instead, what I'm doing is the actual uh, proof of signing up for a SimScale account is actually its own assignment now. Um, and that will be detailed in the, the coming couple of weeks. The social contract is an important component of an online course. Basically, th this is posted under the week one resources on the Blackboard site. It's a short document, a couple of pages, and uh, I would say it's required reading. This sets out the expectations for how students will behave in online interactions in terms of what's socially acceptable. And uh, this is not an optional thing. This is my expectation of what everyone should do at all times. Given that you're on your, the road to becoming professionals, um, or in some cases, some of you may already have been working as professionals for years before coming to Canada, say, um, th th this is sort of sh hopefully shouldn't be any news and uh, it, it should be the way you should have been conducting yourselves already. All the materials that are posted to Blackboard or um, that, yeah, basically all the materials that are posted to the Blackboard site are intended for classroom use only. You as the students do not have permission to share the material posted to the Blackboard site um, openly on the internet or with any other parties. Um, basically, the Blackboard materials are there. You can download them for your private use during teaching, and that's all. Okay, now let's get into the lecture schedule. This is approximate, but it shouldn't change much. Um, so today is, May, uh, is the May 21 lecture, and uh, we'll be, we're doing this lecture right now. We'll have lectures uh, the next two weeks as well. In weeks four and five, we'll do lab one. My experience last time offering the course was that because most of you may not have done any CFD before, um, it, it, you, you may need some extra time to, to sort of get situated um, with your first task doing CFD. And so in lab one, um, I've allocated two weeks to uh, allow extra help for that. On June 25th, there'll be a midterm assessment. I haven't exactly worked out the details of what that's going to look like yet, but it's probably going to be an assignment via Blackboard that's very open-ended and requires you to uh, think critically and sort of create in your answer rather than being able to sort of just, um, you know, reiterate things that I've, I've put in the lectures. Of course, in an online class, there's no way I can limit the materials that you have access to. So it's necessary for me to use sort of very open-ended forms of assessment. After the break week, we'll have another lecture. 
then another lab, then another lecture. I would say lecture five is sort of looking at drag sources on cars as sort of the culminating material of the course. Then we're going to have two more weeks of lab uh, for lab three. Um, one for the main part of the lab, which we'll do as a group, and a second one for sort of a follow-up assignment, which will be an individual one. In the last week, we'll have an introduction to wind noise and aeroacoustics, and then a final assessment, which will basically be a quiz related to lecture six. There will also be a quiz uh, for each week of lecture, as I'll outline in the assignments below. Okay, the important dates, these are standard across uh, all courses in the summer term, so I don't think I need to spend a lot of time on this. Learning outcomes, right? We're going to gain mastery of basic fluid mechanical principles and, and dimensional analysis, understand flow features around bluff body, flow separation and wakes, identify the effects of aerodynamic forces on vehicles, how geometry affects those, become familiar with CFD, understand basics of aerodynamic noise, um, convey findings from CFD and technical reports, carry out group work, um, and communicate uh, professionally via the discussion boards. Okay, so here's the evaluation methods. This is probably looks a little bit different than what you're used to in many courses, namely because there are a large number of evaluations and none of them are, are individually worth a large amount of your course grade. So these all add up to 100. Um, if you uh, double check that, and for some reason that's not the case, please do let me know, but I think I've checked it. So you'll see that after every lecture, there's a quiz that's worth just 3% uh, of, of the course material, with the exception of the final assessment, which is the quiz on lecture 6, that's worth 2%. These will be uh, due essentially the day after the lecture, so uh, the quiz will open at the end of the second uh, sections lecture period, so at uh, 3 p.m. on Thursdays, and you'll have until 3 p.m. the following Friday to complete the quiz. However, once you begin the quiz, you'll have a lesser amount of time to finish it um, based on that specific quiz and maybe anywhere from sort of 30 minutes to an hour sort of thing. Um, but you'll be able to ha start it any time within that 24-hour window. Um, and these will be um, multiple choice quizzes. They may involve calculations. Um, sometimes, but for the most part, there'll be multiple choice quizzes. Um, and their primary purpose is to give you a motivation to keep up with the lecture material um, week to week and not fall behind. As a prerequisite to Lab 1, you'll need to create a SimScale account, and there'll be a small assignment showing that you've got proof of that worth 2% of your final grade. Lab one will be split into two parts. There'll be one for the, com the, the case setup um, and then a second part for the lab report. This, in this way, there's an opportunity for you to get feedback on the case setup and correct it if there's any major problems before you write up the lab report. The midterm assessment I talked about, this will be that open-ended assignment of some sort and that's the single, uh, you know, that's worth 15%, which is the highest that something is worth. Um, the Lab 2 and Lab 3 reports will be each worth 10%. And then there's this additional in-depth individual analysis part in Lab 3. Um, and uh, this will be something where you'll have to look at the, ma the material I've taught you in the course, um, explaining how flow geometry, effe or geometry affects uh, flow and drag characteristics for vehicles, and then relate what you found in your CFD for Lab 3 to that. And, and essentially explain what's going on in the flow in detail in your own words, and there'll be uh, individualized assignments associated with that. Because all the lab work you're gonna be doing, with the exception of this in-depth analysis, is gonna be done in groups, I'm also assigning a peer assessment worth 10% of the grade. Um, this will essentially be set up in a way such that it's not possible for everyone to, in the group to get uh, 10 out of 10. Um, so you will, you will need to differentiate between the, the most significant and least significant contributors to the group. Um, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll, there'll be a very fair way that that will be assessed. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, there'll be these discussion board best contributions. What this is going to look like is an assignment where you will need to collect your three uh, favorite discussion board contributions that you have made over the course of the term. These could be a good question that you ask or an answer to a question you provide to someone else, for example, um, and you just pick what you think the three best ones are with some explanation as to why, 
um, and you'll submit that as a Blackboard assignment um, for grading. The due dates for everything are here. So the quizzes are always the day after the lecture. Um, the SimScale account confirmation is two days before the first lab so that we can check that all, everything's in place before the first lab. And then um, you've got sort of a few days after the first lab to get uh, uh, the case setup done, essentially until after the second uh, lab day. Um, and then the report is due the following week before uh, the day of class. Um, let's see, grading, this is all normal. Um, okay, if, something, if you're going to be late, you, you, you get 10% deducted per day up to three days for late submissions. After that, you get zero. Um, if there's something where you think you're going to have to hand in something late and there's like a good reason, um, do get in touch with me via course messages and we'll try to work out a solution. Uh, this makeup test this is sort of boilerplate. There's not going to be any tests, so there's no makeup test. Obviously, there's no restrictions on calculators because I have no idea what you're doing working on the course at home. There will be student evaluations of teaching done online later in the semester. Uh, the rest of this is sort of, most of this is standard stuff. Um, here's something important I want to add in terms of communication. Uh, you're, again, you're encouraged to utilize office hours and the discussion boards to ask questions. And examples of expectations for professionalism in messages to the instructor um, via course messages or posted to the message boards will be provided soon. Um, so you'll have an example of templates of sort of what professional messages uh, look like. In your groups, you're encouraged to develop ground rules, identify your roles and responsibilities for each person, and set timelines and set standards for communication. And how you do all that is up to you. Academic integrity is very important. Um, let me just say that I operate on the assumption that the vast majority of students are honest and have no intention to cheat. Um, so we will operate on the presumption of innocence um, until proven otherwise. Um, but that said, I am designing the assessments for the course to minimize the possibilities of uh, temptation for any academic dishonesty. Um, and then you can read the rest of this. Um, none of the rest of this is sort of particularly different than in most other courses. So that's the syllabus. Um, and we've gone through it. And if there's any questions on that, please feel free to post them on the discussion boards.